Hey there, welcome to- Yeah, 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 you've heard the intro like 600 times. I got a question sent over to me that stopped me in my tracks. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I just kept thinking about this. Dear Blocko, why won't Ohio let me build a house out of bread? Did this person try and they got stopped by Ohio? Did Ohio come in and stop this person from building elsewhere for some reason? I'm sure there are laws in place to stop people from building bread houses in any state. In an effort to keep people safe, governments have developed a set of laws about how buildings can be constructed. These are known as building codes, which encompass a wide range of rules about things like structural integrity, fire safety, and pest resistance. Existence, all things that a house made of bread would clearly violate. I looked into this. Even one of the world's hardest breads, hardtack, wouldn't be up for the task. It's baked four times to remove all the water content and can last for years. It's so hard that the soldiers who had to eat it called it sheet iron crackers. But even this bread softens and gets moldy when wet. It's also well known for attracting bugs and other pests. Another nickname the soldiers gave to it was Worm Castle. Let me hit you with that Eddie Burback, yikes. And Bug Palace or not, we also all know what happens to bread when it burns. Now, I don't know if this person is still trying to build a house out of food in Ohio, but I actually did find something that might do the trick. They can use mushrooms. Uh, not like that. More specifically, I'm talking about the network of branched tubular threads in fungi known as mycelium. This network transports nutrients from the environment to a fungi, such as a mushroom. Kind of like how the roots of a tree transport nutrients to its fruit. Architects and engineers have been experimenting with building structures from this natural material, and it's surprisingly easy. They begin with a mold add a growing medium for it to eat, and then let the mycelium do its thing. In just a few days, the mold will be filled. After it's dried out, it'll be a lightweight, super strong material that can be used for structure, insulation, furniture, a Mars living structure, you name it. Researchers are still working on making it a more practical replacement for common building materials, such as concrete. Like concrete, mycelium is water, mold, and fire resistant, but it falls behind in terms of strength and weather resistance. While concrete has a compressive strength of 4,000 PSI, a mycelium brick only has a strength of 30 PSI. Although, relative to its weight, which is just 43 kilograms, it's pretty strong. One research team stacked 10,000 mycelium bricks into a 13 meter tall tower that survived its three month trial. But the best part is that this material is very eco-friendly. For one, they dramatically cut the amount of fossil fuels needed during the fabrication process of typical building materials. They are also a convenient way to recycle waste products since the growing medium can be things like agricultural byproducts or even demolished buildings. And the mycelium structures themselves are 100% biodegradable. A team at MIT actually created the first occupied building made from mycelium bricks. So. Ohio might stop you from building a bread house, but maybe, just maybe, in your lifetime, they'll encourage you to build a mushroom house. Thank you for this question. It did keep me up at night. I went a little mad, but I love finding the science in the silly. So let me know in the comment section below right now, do you have any other questions, silly or not, that I can answer in a future video? Ask away and click like on some of the ones that you find really interesting. Click here to watch this video or click here to watch this mystery video that YouTube is gonna recommend you. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.